Welcome back to the WAC Basketball Preview presented by Hercules Tires. I'm Rachel V. Hill, joined now by the head coach for men's basketball, Utah Valley, Mark Madsen, and graduate student and forward, Evan Cole. Gentlemen, how are we? Gentlemen, it looks like you may be muted. I think that's got it. You can hear me now? Yep. Perfect, how are you both? We're doing great, we're doing great. We've had a, a good week of, of practicing and uh, um, we're excited. We, we did get shut down a couple of times due to COVID in August, but uh, we had a full round of tests yesterday and, and everyone um, is clean. So we're, we're excited where we are. I'm happy to hear that. How are practices going so far this season? I'd like, I'd like uh, you know, for, from a coach's standpoint, I'll talk a little bit on that, and then I'd like Evan to kind of speak on it. But I think um, I'm really happy. The energy has been fantastic. The, the players have been picking up the system. And, and we're just grateful that, again, from a COVID standpoint, we're, we're able to have practice because earlier in the summer, uh, we didn't have that opportunity. But I kind of want to open this up and introduce Evan Cole, who's been um, a big part of what we're doing. Yeah, thank you, George. Um, yeah, practices have been real well. We have a lot of new guys. so. You know, it took some time to mesh, but I think we're doing you know, we're resting real well as a team. And, um, you know, it's looked a little different this year with Corona, but, you know, I think, I think we're making the most of it so far. Coach, 17 new players on this team. Evan mentioned it. How do you mesh that many personalities together? Well, I mean, we do have, we do have a few familiar faces, Trey Woodbury, uh, Fardos, and JJ. And so it, it is definitely um, something that takes time because players need to have the ability to learn from each other on the court. And then there's that, that period where they also get to know each other off the court. And so I think our guys have done a great job of, of spending as much time as possible in, in, in the right context, playing on their own, you know, in, in limited situations early on at the start of the pandemic. And then lately with practice, it's uh, every day, I think the players get to know each other, other's tendencies better and better. And again, I'm seeing that that really manifest itself now uh, in the way they're playing together and with each other. Evan, you transferred from Georgia Tech. What about Coach Madsen and his program made you want to finish out your career here? Um, I mean, as soon as I hit the transfer portal, uh, Madsen was one of the first coaches that called me, and you know, he just gave me a vision of you know what he saw for this program and you know what he saw for me and how I fit in with the program, and you know, it was everything I wanted to hear and. Um, yeah, I just made me want to come here and play my last year here. You were voted second team all whack for the preseason poll. What about your game makes you believe that people voted you in? Uh, I mean, I haven't done anything yet. You know, that's preseason all, all whack. So, I mean, if I'm there at the end of the year, then that's what I want to be. But, you know, preseason really doesn't mean a lot to me right now. So, um, but I'm glad uh, people have high hopes for me. <laughs> Coach, Maybe looking at the non-conference slate, what I'll, can I'll people expect to briefly. see on this? Oh, go for it, me, Coach. I'm in on that briefly, if that's okay. Um, Evan Cole is a multidimensional player. He has an inside-out game. I think even his skill set, which we studied closely on tape from Georgia Tech, has exceeded our own expectations, um, which were already very high. And so Evan is someone who, he's a game changer when he gets on the court, on both, both ends of the court. And uh, we're really, really excited he's here. And, and he's, been, he's been one of the guys that has helped elevate the energy in practice every single day. And so that, that's been phenomenal to have uh, his leadership and his presence in the program. Coach, what's been the number one thing about Evan that you've appreciated having him out there? Well, <clears throat> you know, one of my old coaches, Phil Jackson, used to always talk about how important it is to play with, with tremendous energy. Um, the Lakers used to talk about, hey, there are times when, when great energy can be, you, you know, the platinum, you know, the, the, the Hall of Fame player, the all-star. It, it sounds strange to say, but Evan is one of those guys who he combines a really honed skill set that he's worked hard to develop. His, his three-point shot, his ball handling ability, his ability to put it down on the deck. He's worked hard um, to develop all those skills, but then you combine it with great energy and great toughness. And those are the players that, that are difference makers. Coach, now what can you tell us about your non-conference slate? 
Well, let's talk about the first two games of our non-conference schedule, which will be uh, at Stanford on the road on November 25th. And then we'll, we'll go over to BYU on November 28th. And obviously one of the things that, that Evan and I talked about during his recruitment and really that we talked about with all of our players during the recruiting process is um, we're not shying away in, in our scheduling at all. Um, Stanford, one of the top programs in the country. Um, Jared Haas has done a phenomenal job there. They're, they're projected to win the Pac-12 or, or be top two or three. And obviously BYU, an excellent program. Um, they really had a banner year last year and, and, and they have a tremendous uh, tradition there as well. So we, we want to play the best teams and we want to put our best foot forward against top, top competition. Evan, I know you are a two-time Sports Center spot, or top 10, excuse me, recipient. How many of those plays can we expect to see this season? <laughs> I mean, hopefully you can see a couple more. <laughs> Coach, when you see a player that makes a Sports Center top ten, how much more appealing is that for you? I think you always want to um, look at what they're doing uh, on the on the top ten. You know, there are some players that that are, are kind of flash in the pan guys that you know they get a highlight, and that's really all they can do is they only have a forty inch vertical, they only have you know a passing ability that can look like an and one mixtape. The thing about Evan is. He has those talents and abilities, but he's a complete basketball player. Uh, his defense rotations are sound. Uh, the, way, uh, the way he communicates defensively um, is, is sound. Um, his knowledge of the game, which obviously the tremendous career he had at Georgia Tech, that, that adds to the package. So, you know, some of the guys you see on the Sports Center top 10 are just kind of, you know, one time flare up, but a guy like Evan and others, um, they, they combine the talent with the ability with the consistent uh, play on the court. Coach, you were a player and a coach for the Los Angeles Lakers. They were able to win the NBA title this year. How was that experience for you watching it? I was happy. I was, uh, you know, the great thing about the Lakers organization, it starts with the Buss family. When I was there, it was, it was Dr. Buss, Dr. Jerry Buss, who I'll never forget this, Rachel. I, I had wrist surgery after my rookie year, and one of the first people who called me was, was Dr. Buss. Um, I, I was out of the hospital at home and I, I saw the phone ring and I just, I, I was blown away that the owner of the organization would, would take the time to reach out to me as a, I, I had been a rookie the previous season. But really, uh, Dr. Buss and, and, and his entire family, they have a legacy of treating people right and they have a legacy of deep knowledge of basketball. So I was really happy for the, for the Buss family, for all the Lakers player and staff, players and staff. It was really gratifying to see. Coach, going into year two now at Utah Valley, what was the biggest lesson that you learned in year one? Well, I think that one of the big lessons I learned was <clears throat> in college basketball, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Um, from a roster standpoint, we played one game at Southern Utah where we were down to five players. There was three minutes left in the game, and this is, again, a non-conference game from last season. Three of the players had four fouls, and so if, if one guy would have picked up a foul, we would have been playing with four guys. Now, that came about because of injuries. Um, there, there was one suspension involved, and, and it also came because, obviously, when I took over, that there, we, we had, a, in terms of uh, numbers of players on the roster, it was a smaller roster. And so... I was proud of our guys that game. We battled. Um, we almost won the game despite being shorthanded. But really, in college basketball, so many different things can happen, and you have to be prepared for any scenario. Coach, last year at the media day, we had a very important conversation about Crocs. My question to you today is, <laughs> what Crocs are you wearing today? Rachel, <laughs> no Crocs today. Evan just looked down. No Crocs today because uh, – you know, couldn't find them at the house, so I threw on my, my trusty Adidas. <laughs> good answer, good answer but, there, but, Coach. But we are trying to get Evan wearing Crocs. I tell him, I say they're really stylish wearing them around <laughs> campus. <laughs> I love to hear that. <laughs> well, gentlemen, thank you so much. I'm now going to send it over to Chris Thompson for media questions. Thank hey, you. Thank you. We will start with Kyle McDonald. Hey, guys. Kyle McDonald with Wacoos Digest. Evan, I wanted to ask you, you just heard what Coach Madsen said about you, what he's seen and why he recruited you. Did that make your decision easier to come to Utah Valley, knowing that you had a coach who saw the greatness that you could 
potentially have this year? I mean, absolutely. Um, you know, I wanted to go play for a coach that really believed in my game. And, you know, if there's one coach that believed in my game, it was Coach Madsen. And, you know, that goes that go that went a long way for me. I mean, um, you know, Coach Madsen was, you know, drafted in the first round. And, you know, I mean, that's something, you know, my dream. So he's lived that dream. And I'm sure he, you know, he's, you know, tells me all his NBA stories, and you know that's exactly where I want to be. And having a coach from experiences like that is just, you know, amazing. Jared Lloyd. What's up, Jared? What's up, guys? Great to see you guys here for the media teleconference. I guess how we're doing. Great, to, great, great to see. You. Actually, we don't see. You. We we just see a, a little text. Jared Lloyd, <laughs> got to turn your video on. <laughs> They told us not to, so uh, I, was, I was following their instructions as far as the WAC goes. But I wanted to ask about uh, uh, cohesion, because when you have a roster turnover like you guys have had and bringing in as many guys with as many different things, and this is kind of a question for both of you guys, how do you develop that cohesion, and how long does it take for it to really happen in-game? Because practice is one thing, but game's a little bit different. I mean, having that many guys, it's going to take leadership. and. You know, I think we ha have a lot of great leaders on this team. And, you know, hanging with each other off the court is just as important as being on the court together. Um, but, you know, we've all been around here since the summer. Um, we're really getting to know each other and our tendencies on the court. Um, so I think we're going to be ready for the first game um, for Stanford at Stanford. Um, I just think we, uh, you know, we meshed real quick, honestly. And uh, we have a lot of young guys and we actually have some, a lot of experienced guys. And I think, you know, that combo has actually worked out really well. Yeah, Jared, I would echo what Evan just touched on. You know, obviously it's been a challenge. It's been a challenge because, you know, whereas in the past we'll get all 15, 20 guys together, you know, go bowling, go to pizza. We have to be much more careful with COVID. You know, the guys have been grinding on the court. We've had some early morning practices. We've been going hard. I mean, today we're going paintballing. Today, today we're going paintballing. We're going to split up into teams. We're going to have some fun. And and really it's it's nice to see – the guys are becoming more cohesive on the court, Jared. They're learning each other's tendencies. They're having more fun together on the court because as you as you mesh in that way, the game slows down. Um, more, more great basketball plays are made, and ultimately, um, guys have a lot more fun uh, through the process. Back to Kyle McDonald. Mark, they everybody you know notices the new guys on your roster. But it's not just new guys. You added – you're almost too deep at every spot, and you got guys that can play multiple positions. How nice is that to have, especially knowing there could be an issue down the road with someone testing positive or something where somebody can't play or injuries? I mean, depth wasn't something you had in your first year. Yeah, it's – you hit it right there, Kyle. Depth was a problem last year. but We didn't have it, um, especially we didn't have it when we needed it. This year, um, we do have depth at every position. We have competition at every position. And ultimately, that brings out the best in, in every single player. I know when I played, if I knew, if no one was behind me, pushing at, pushing at me, nipping at my heels. And conversely, when I was on the other end of that, it was my job to push the guy ahead of me and, and to try to get minutes. And so it's been great to have that competitive spirit in practice, um, knowing that if, if there's a COVID issue or if there's an injury, next man is ready to step up and be ready to play. Uh, another factor in depth is as, as the conference schedules get worked out, it's, it's uh, you know, there's going to be more games played on very short rest um, and, and more games played uh, in, in some ways consecutively on the road. And so you just have to have um, extra bodies, um, ready and capable players ready to step up when their name is called. Jared Lloyd. I did want to do a little more addressing of that elephant that's in the room for everybody in college basketball as you get ready for this season, and that's the, the pandemic. <laughs> Mark, you come in as a head coach, and you're dealing with a pandemic in your second year. And Evan, you're, you're dealing with it as a player. How are you? How are you having to tackle all of the uncertainties and things? Because we, you know, with the numbers going up, uh, you know, here in the fall and uncertainty of how winter's going to be, uh, what's what's that like? I mean, 
you really can't worry about it that much, to be honest. I mean, you just got to go out there. For me, it's just go out there every day and practice, you know, give them all, make sure I'm getting better every day and, you know, prepare for prepare for every game, you know, we can. You know, I don't really don't know what the schedule is going to look like, but, you know, there's one thing I got to be and I got to be ready for, you know, anything that comes our way. And I would add to that, there is a lot of uncertainty with, 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 with the COVID. I think our players are doing a nice job of just um, following the protocols. You know, it's amazing, Jared, all of the, how much you learn about the CDC, about medical care, about, you, you know, pandemic related things. We, we try to sanitize. So, so in the course of a practice, we might take three or four breaks. Everyone in the gym sanitizes their hands with hand sanitizer. We, we try to keep um, socially distant, physically distant as much as possible during breaks, during water breaks. Even when we come together in huddles, we, Matt Flores, our strength coach, does a great job of, of trying to keep people distant. And so we have a whole uh, system of protocols and, and safety measures that we try to follow um, to keep these players safe. Al McDonald. Going back to, this for both of you, going back to what you said about going paintballing today, knowing how competitive your guys are on the floor, how competitive do you think this paintball match is going to get between you guys? Oh yeah, it's gonna be really competitive. You know, I'm coming. I'm coming for Coach Matheson. He's on the other team. We already got our teams uh, figured out. So if I see Coach Matheson out there on the field, I'm definitely trying to trying to go. There's you know? no way he'll catch me. <laughs> I, I walk five miles every morning. Yeah, these guys run every day, but I'm I'm out there walking. I'm you know trying to stay in shape. Yeah, running beats walking. Coach. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Utah Valley head coach Mark Matson, graduate forward Evan Cole. Thank you for joining us today, guys. Thank you for having us. Yep, thanks.